welcome to the special series which is called Real Bow Staff Self-Defense. Now I don't want you to think that all the other techniques you've learned to this point aren't real self-defense techniques. By all means you could use any of the bow jitsu techniques we've learned in fighting and self-defense. But we're looking at this from a self-defense, self-protection perspective. And we're going to look at situations like what if someone attacks us without a weapon and they punch us or they kick us or they pull a knife on us and things like that. And we're not all prepared with our perfect six foot bow staff. Maybe we pick up a pipe or we pick up a broom or anything at all that is a cylindrical elongated object that's longer than three feet or so. Clearly our techniques will be a little different. If it's very short, it will be more like knife or like collie type techniques, but we're talking about a longer weapon. And of course, a longer weapon gives us distance. It gives us reach and range. And it's better than having to fight empty handed. So on this first scenario, we're talking about an empty handed aggressor. And today with us, we have Adam Gerald. He's actually an Ultimate Bow student who came out to do this series with us. And it's an honor to have him out here doing this special series. Um, so Adam's actually going to be the aggressor. In this case, he doesn't have a weapon, but there's obviously an altercation that's happening. He's moving towards me. I know he's getting ready to strike, to swing at me. Um, in this case, though, he is empty handed. I'm always scanning and being aware of my surroundings. If I see a chair, if I see a broom, if I see something I could pick up, I'm going to use that. As a, it's an opportunity. It gives me an advantage especially if I have some special training. So if I picked up this broom here, okay, it might not seem like much of a weapon, but what I can do is create space between him and I. And as he's moving in, I'm going to immediately be throwing a thrust. That's going to be my go-to strike. It's very difficult to block a thrust. Um, it's disruptive because it could go to different targets as well. But he's moving in. I'm creating space here. He doesn't stop. I could strike across the temple. I can do a lot of my other strikes with the edge of this. But my first one would be that thrust. That will at least create some space for me. I might even then come in with kicks and other things. But the point is, we're scanning. If we do see an object we can pick up that's similar to a staff, we'll pick it up. And we want to get into a stance. And we want to get that presented in between us and the person. Of course, we use our voice. If I'm able to talk him down, de-escalate the situation, hey, man, what's going on? You know there's no problem here. No reason for you to be fighting. You know, if I can stop the scenario there, that's what I'm going to do. But if it doesn't matter, he's still moving in. He's coming towards me. I'm ready. Striking, most likely to the center line, the growing, or the neck, or to the head region. The reason why I usually recommend torso first is it's the bigger target. you got a lot of adrenaline pumping. You don't want to miss. You want to get your first strike in. Okay, my favorite follow-up target would then be coming from the outside. Okay, an angle two to the side of the temple or the side of the back of the school or the side of the neck. And then you can also follow up with like heel thrust and whatever else makes sense. But the general principles here of an empty handed aggressor, if you have a weapon, you, you're scanning, you pick that up, you get it back, you create some space. If you have to, two handed thrust or single thrust, and then immediately following up with other attacks though. If you are fighting back, don't wait. Don't go, see how that went for him. If you know you're going to fight back and you're trying to save your life and you're ending this situation, put them all together until you obviously can get out of that situation safely. So those are our general basic principles to handling an empty-handed aggressor.